Hey, welcome to Mechajiki. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be going over the RenderGuard UI. So as you can see over here on our left, we currently actually have RenderGuard docked inside of our After Effects. So you can move this around, so say if we want to move it over here, or move it down below, or off to the side, we could be able to move this around anywhere we want and be able to resize it down. But for right now, I'm actually going to move it back here, and I'm actually going to expand it out and hit the tilde key, just to show you all the features that are inside there. Now start for the top, we have our plant the seeds button. Now before you hit this, you want to make sure you've already configured your seeds and optionally your priority and post render actions. Also, more importantly, if we tilt it out of this, you want to make sure that your comp that you have here is already sitting inside your render queue with your codec settings already set as well as the destination of where you want to render it set as well. And if you're working with multiple nodes that are on the network, you need to make sure the location of where you're rendering this file is accessible by all those computers. So going back to our UI, we're going to hit the tilde key one more time. So next is the seeds number. So what you want to do is set this number to the amount of segments you actually want to break your comp up into. So if we go back here, and I currently have this set to four, I know that it will actually take this comp and render into four equal segments and submit that out to Gardner. Now if we go back inside here, next we have the priority option. So if I'm working with multiple projects and I have multiple things inside of my seed bank that are rendering and Gardner's just picking up, I can be able to turn on priority, set it to one, and it will be the next thing that gets picked up. So you want to be careful with this because you don't want to have a multiple things that are set to one because then it goes by alphabetical after that if you have multiple things set as one. Now, you can set 1 as the highest, you could also set 5 as the lowest, but if you want to do even lower priority, just turn it off. So next is our post-render actions. So if I turn this on and hit configure, you'll see that we have two different options inside here. So after my render is completed and I have this option turned on, what RenderGuard will do is take that rendered file and run it through another render action. In this case, I have it selected for MP4, so after my MOV is done completed, or my image sequence is, is completed, it will render an MP4 of that rendered file. I can also select QuickTime and choose from these various codecs to render another QuickTime if I so choose to. This works really well if you're working with image sequences. Next, I have my Launch More Gardeners option. I could select this to actually launch the Gardener processes without actually going into my Script UI Panels folder and launching it from there. So say if I want to launch two more, I can click this. You'll also see how many Gardener processes you currently have running. In this case, we have zero, and I just want to run two more. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And what will happen is Gardener will launch and load up and start looking inside of your seed bank directory. So in our case, it is volumes server ext seed bank. So I'm going to go ahead and actually close these down and you could do that by hitting control C on your keyboard. And we'll close those down. Next I'll show you the preferences area. So normally after you've already set up your general preferences here, which is your Python command location, your FFmpeg path, as well as your seed bank, you don't actually need to configure anything else below here unless you really have to or if we're doing any troubleshooting. So just starting from the top, we have our general prefs. So as we went through this in a previous tutorial, we have our Python command location. On Mac OS, it's just Python, but if you're on a Windows machine, this will be directed to the Python 2.7 location. Next, we have the FFmpeg path. This is where we've actually saved the FFmpeg file. Uh, in our case, we saved it to applications FFmpeg, or on Windows, we saved it to the program files directory. So next is our seed bank location. We already set this up in a previous tutorial showing that we put it inside volume server ext seed bank. This location is where RenderGuard actually saves all of its files as well as any of its rendered segments. So we'll show that in a later tutorial how to manage that. So next is our advanced preferences area. So as it states here, you probably shouldn't touch any of these unless you really know what you're doing. So first we have our render command. This is actually the command that's submitted out to the terminal windows or the Gardner processes. So you can modify this, uh, but if you mess something up, you could always click default and it will just go back to what it originally had. Next we have the AE render path. Currently it's set to the After Effects CC 2018 AE render. Uh, I don't recommend changing this unless you actually have the AE render path somewhere else. Again, if you change anything, you could just hit default. Next we have the FFmpeg commands. If you click this button, 
you'll get this dialog window that pops up and you'll see that we have the combined script, the QuickTime post render action script, as well as the MP4 post render action script. So you can change these and modify them uh, if you know what you're doing, but in any case, if you mess anything up, you can always hit default. Now for the MP4 option, you do get the option of actually changing it between H.264 and H.265. So if you select Assistant, you'll get this other dialog window where you can select between H.264, H.265, as well as different formats, as well as changing your quality settings and bitrate. Uh, whatever you change here, say if I bring this down to 36, I can say OK, and you'll see that it got updated right here, CRF 36. Now again, since I changed it, I'm just going to put it back to default, and then you'll see that it changed it back to 10. So we're going to go ahead and click OK. Next we have the increment and save option. By default this is turned off uh, because RenderGarden itself, when you hit submit or plant the seeds, will actually copy your project into the seed bank folder inside the source directory. And that's actually where all the gardener processes will render from. That way you can continue working in your open project and not have any interruptions during that time. Now there are two reasons why you would want to turn this on. A, if you like to have it where the project actually increments itself and that way you can always have a paper trail of your files as you're rendering. Or two, if you have different mount points on your various render nodes. So say if I'm working on my machine here and I have a folder that's actually on my desktop, when I share that out, it will actually be shared out to other machines as volumes desktop, whereas on my machine, it will look at it as users Mechajiki desktop. So what the increment and save does, it bypasses that whole mounting problem. And we'll go through that in a later tutorial when we talk about file sharing. Next we have the relative paths. Uh, you could use this, that will help against the different mount points as well. And we actually have this on by default, so we recommend keeping this on and only turning it off if you're doing any troubleshooting. Next we have Use Gardener. So Use Gardener is actually the automated process that launches inside of Terminal that views the seed bank folder and picks up renders automatically. So you could choose to use this. We have this on by default and we highly recommend it that way on all of your render nodes. If you submit a render, it'll automatically get picked up on those machines. If you decide to turn this off, what RenderGarden will do is when it plants the seeds, it will create all these different applets or .bat files if you're on Windows where you can manually launch them yourself. So you have the choice of doing that if you so choose. So, but by default, we're just gonna keep this checked for right now. Next, we have short seed names. So say if you have any long file name. So in our case, we have RenderGarden Promo V001. And we actually don't want to have that inside of the RenderGarden file names. We just want to have it re read out as seed one, seed two, seed three. Next, we have the Gardener Success Failure Detection Area. And this is really for advanced users only. We really recommend don't change any of the settings in here unless we're troubleshooting as to why your RenderGarden isn't working. So first we have output files. Now, when Gardner finishes your seed, it will take a look at the directory of where that file got saved to or rendered to and make sure it exists. If it doesn't exist, it will mark the RenderGarden file as incomplete and requeue it for another Gardner process to pick it up. Next, we have the finished string. Now, this will scan your entire log file and look for the string finished composition. If it does not pick that up, it will automatically requeue your render even though the render is possibly there. So again, don't turn that on unless we're troubleshooting. Next, we have the error string. And what this will do is Gardner will scan the log file as well. And if anything comes up as an error, it will automatically say that that render is incomplete, requeue it, and get rendered over again. So again, with this section down here, we recommend just keeping output files checked and only check these options if you're troubleshooting. Now that about wraps up the entire render garden UI. Normally, when you're working with RenderGarden and after you've already set your general prefs, you don't really need to touch anything down here unless we're doing further troubleshooting. So in most cases, I'm just going to choose hide prefs, hit my tilde key, and just keep this nice small window down over here, just so that way I can configure just the crucial options such as seeds, priority, and my post-render actions. <laughs>